Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order and get started. Uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance, so please stand. All right, thank you all for coming out for this. Uh, I know it's, uh, you're taking some time out of your, out of your work day, maybe taking your lunch break to do this. Uh, thanks, obviously, for uh, Southern Craft Barbecue for providing some really good food, and I'm excited to, uh, I was excited to be able to try it, and it's excellent, so whenever you get the chance, please try it. <laughs> and uh, for the Bristol, Tennessee City Council for coming out for us. Uh, I thought real quick, since we have some people who may not know who we are, we're just gonna go around the table here and introduce ourselves, just so everybody knows, so um, I'll start with our side. Uh, I'm Neil Osborne. I'm the mayor of the city of Bristol, Virginia. I'm Bill Hartley. I'm vice mayor, city of Bristol, Virginia. Anthony Farnham, city councilman, Bristol, Virginia. Uh, Chris Margaret Fire Robbins, the Bristol, Tennessee city council, serving as mayor. Malin Lutko, Vice Mayor, Bristol, Tennessee. Lee Powers, Council, Bristol, Tennessee. Vince Turner, Council, Bristol, Tennessee. Chad King, City Councilman, Bristol, Tennessee. Rita McClenney, President, Virginia Tourism Corporation. All right, thank you all very much. Um, <clears throat> all we're going to do is hear a couple of good presentations, and our first is from Ms. McClenney. So if you want to go ahead and, and tell us some good stuff, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's an honor to stand before this distinguished body. It's an occasion that comes with an environment um, of today, knowing what we've been facing, looking at the Wall Street Journal this morning and the news of the virus and the impact that it's had on our economy. I believe that what this will prove out is that tur tourism is resilient. Tourism is an industry that impacts our community, the communities that we live in. It also creates an environment for the guests that we market to, that we welcome to come to our cities. And these visitors and their precious dollars that they spend in our localities add to the vibrancy of the community for citizens as well as what the visitors experience but also, tourism is the front door to economic development. And I would know we have our Director of Economic Development here for Bristol, and it will prove that companies want to locate in places that have an environment for their employees and those that they hire, and those people who are relocating, to have a good life, a quality of life, and a quality of place. So I think in our relationship from Virginia Tourism with Bristol, and you know, it, it's both sides. It's Bristol, Virginia, as well as Bristol, Tennessee. Because visitors don't know borders. That yellow double line going down the middle of State Street serves both of our fine states. And the many attractions that you have invested in, and the marketing also is appealing to both those visitors who are coming on the Virginia side and also crossing over to the Tennessee side. We have had the pleasure of working with your interim tourism director and also working with, she serves as the director of the Chamber of Commerce for both of our fine states. And these projects and what you have focused on in terms of making sure that that revenue coming in from tourism is supplying the necessary appropriation for what government is supposed to support. Fire, police, schools, infrastructure. But where would those revenue dollars come from if it were not for the spending of tourism? When I look at your data, going back to, I will call it the rolling glory days of 2014 and 2015 and 2016. And what happened? Birthplace of country music opened. We had the Mumford and Sons concert that was here. We had the Battle of Bristol. I know you guys were all there. 
That was a big time. I think we should do that every year, right? <laughs> so the Battle of Bristol really uh, showed how the region can come together, how we can attract hundreds of thousands of people to come for one event. And NASCAR is another example of that. You have the track there in Tennessee. We have a lot of hotels and a lot of restaurants on the Virginia side. But again, people don't know borders. And when they spend dollars in your community, it's because they've seen a reason to come. If you're not marketing to attract people to Bristol, they're going to go to North Carolina, they're going to West Virginia, they're going to Pennsylvania, or in your case, they're going to go where? And it's okay if they go to Abingdon and Marin, Marin, Marion and other cities and locations, but also imagine, particularly for Virginia and for Tennessee, Charlottesville wants those people, Richmond wants those folks. So our job at Virginia Tourism is to make sure you're getting the maximum efficiency in visits from out of state. We market in Boston, New York, Delaware, Washington, D.C., North Carolina, Ohio. So our marketing of the 50 years that Virginia's for Lovers has been in existence helps your Bristol brand recruit more people. Now I talked about the numbers and when we saw that you were growing at three times the rate of other localities in the state, and this was 2014, 2015, now 2017 and 2018, the numbers don't bear out that. We've seen a slowdown, and I don't know if it's because of the marketing dollars are less, or the programs connecting to your marketing are not performing at the same rate. But that is something to be wary of. It's something I think that you should be considerate of, because the statewide growth is 4.4% year over year, from 2017 to 2018, and then the same for 2019 numbers will be coming up very soon. So we'll see those numbers later on in the summer. But again, the investment is important. You have, because you have so many great products with the Crooked Road Trail, I'll add that in. Because when people come in, whether it's from out of state or international, you've had a number of international visitors who I know because of our joint marketing efforts with the birthplace of country music and Virginia tourism and our media familiarization tours, you look on your one sheet here. If you look in your packet, you'll see Bristol Fast Facts. And that tells the story for the earned media placements. New York, Frommers, wide open country. Talking about Bristol, Tennessee, Bristol, Virginia, the border that shaped the future of country music. Not in Nashville, in Bristol. Something to be proud of. And certainly from a heritage standpoint, music tourism sells. And it brings the folks in. Our VTC partnership with VTC Content Marketing, making people aware of Bristol on our blog post, Ken Burns. I tell you, that has moved the needle as well in his country music documentary series. Virginia was highlighted in the first three episodes of that series. And I talked to Leah, director of the museum, saying that yes, it does make a difference and she has seen visitation impacted by the virtue of Ken Burns' series. And that will continue to air. So I will guarantee you, every time that airs, you're going to see a spike and a movement and a difference in visitation. And I know this because when Ken Burns created the Civil War series, every time it ran, the numbers would go up, people were coming in, we were converting visitation, and they wanted more information about the Civil War. So that's just an example. And of course, Ken Burns is a highly regarded documentary filmmaker. And international marketing. See the examples of the coverage in the countries that we recruit visitors to come over and get them down from Dulles Airport in a vehicle, on the train, on a coach, however we need to get them here, we're getting them here. 
and you're getting the coverage because of it. We partnered with you all one year in the Long Road Music Festival in the UK, just outside of London. And that also was an opportunity. So that was a partnership where we paid in $50,000 to help Bristol, Virginia and the Birthplace of Country Music go to that event. And we even sent one of our staff people to be there, Becky Nave, who was on board with them to help promote the area. Now go over to the grants received. If you look at Crush Friday, Music Sponsorship, 50 Years of Love, MLP Award, that is $155,000 that the Commonwealth of Virginia spent directly with Bristol, Virginia. In addition to your marketing, we spent $155,000 to help Bristol market. That's $95,000 a year. That might be more than y'all spend on your marketing. Just consider that these partnerships are important and an MLP is a marketing leverage partnership where your tourism office comes up with a bright marketing idea with partners in the city and they make an application and it could be partners outside, could be Washington County, but in this case with the city and bring in private dollars to match the public dollars. So that private match is added to the public match of the program ideas contributed to the marketing concepts. And that gives a total partner match of $310,000. And again, that's in addition to the $155,000 or $95,000 a year that Virginia Tourism is investing in your marketing. So the power of marketing is in the numbers. The numbers bear out when you are in the marketplace and you are in the right, at the right shows, in the right venues, talking to customers, whether it's group travel, whether it's operators who put together itineraries for individuals to come um, in these groups, whether it's meetings, or whether you're talking about leisure marketing to recruit families who want to come in and spend their precious dollars and have a nice vacation with the people that they love. And we know Virginia's for Lovers is known around the globe. And it really comes home when we talk about for anything you love in a vacation, we know you can find it in Virginia. And I know for anything you love in a vacation, you can find it in Bristol, Virginia. And they get over there to Tennessee. <laughs> and we're happy for them to do that. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to introduce my hardworking and very impressive staff, Vice President, a partnership marketing at Virginia Tourism, Chris Canfield. <laughs> Director of Development, Partnership Marketing, Steve Gallion. And Destination Development Specialist, Becky Nave. And most of all, Becky is a citizen of Bristol, Virginia. Yes. <laughs> She is our secret sauce. <laughs> and I know Beth's going to come up. Um, do we want to take questions now, or should we wait until all presentations? However you guys want to do it, I'm happy to. I think since we have a, since we have a heart out at one for a lot of people, okay. let's, let's hear from, from Beth, and then we'll have questions for both of you at the end. OK. And the one thing I'll add on top of this, um, you know, your Rhythm and Roots is a festival that is widely known, and you have a very dedicated audience of people who come in year after year and the programming is excellent and it's one of the more successful festivals in Virginia so I will just say that music tourism and Bristol Rhythm and Roots is a highlight in our lineup of festivals around the Commonwealth that orthophonic joy that was in conjunction with the 1927 recordings and again a film that was produced with a lot of key artists from Nashville really highlighting country music and its birthplace here in Bristol and the Amazon visit it was about now probably four months ago after Amazon made their announcement to locate in Virginia in Northern Virginia we wanted them to experience the entire Commonwealth. So we had a reception at the birthplace of country music, stayed at the Bristol Hotel, which was very fine. We then uh, took them on a wild ride on the Spearhead Trail, got their hair in, 
wind in the hair, wind in their hair. <laughs> they had a great time. So it was a great experience. And the woman who is their uh, senior vice president of workforce development, the following week brought her husband back. The following week, because she said to Leah, oh, we'll be back. The following week she brought him back. So that's just an example of how she was touched and moved by her experience. And I mentioned uh, the Bristol Hotel. Um, Steve and Chris are staying there. And um, it's a beautiful property. What a great redevelopment story, turning a former office building into a boutique, beautiful property that you know, has all the wonderful amenities that a great property should have. And we're very proud of the coming online very soon Sessions Hotel, which is themed around music, where our caterer for lunch, Southern Craft, is located. They have a rooftop bar. They have a event space that holds about 150 people with its own stage. And it's about 60 rooms total. So you have two new hotel properties that are going to be looking for people to constantly come through and book themselves there and generate more tax revenue. So your marketing will help support those two investments, just of many, a new um, Holiday Inn. So all of that to say, you have all the makings. You are a great city. You are a great place for people to visit. They are visiting. The proof is in the numbers. Let's get back to those 2014, 2015 numbers. And we can do it. It's a great partnership, and thank you for your time. Thank you very much. All right, Beth. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, Madam Mayor, and members of City Council. Um, we truly appreciate, I'm Beth Reinhardt, uh, President and CEO of the Bristol Chamber of Commerce. We truly appreciate this opportunity today. We appreciate that everyone has come together um, from both sides. and. I know some of you had your visitation uh, to other areas canceled due to the current situation, and for that I'm sorry, but for that I'm also very grateful that you're here today to be able to um, carry on this conversation with us. And, and to Rita, thank you so much to you and all of your team for making the trip down here, and, and most importantly for the constant support that we receive um, in the work that we do for not just us, but all of our partners who are here in the room as well. Okay. Um, I do want to, um, before I go into some of the data that we're going to share today, I want to make sure that, that you all know that this is not just the work of Discover Bristol or the Bristol Chamber of Commerce. The data that you're going to see in here is a collective effort of many, many people. Those of you all sitting right here, the decisions the city makes in terms of infrastructure and uh, support for new businesses that come in, you all are a piece of that. We have. Uh, We've got Leah and Kim from the Birthplace of Country Music. We've got Maggie from Believe in Bristol. Who am I missing? Oh, Shane Christian, representing our hoteliers today. Um, and they're just a few of the folks that participate as partners in making the things happen that happen on our behalf. So for that, we're very appreciative. Um, and I would be remiss to also, uh, if I didn't say also, that our Tennessee tourism partners who are not here today, but they're going to be visiting with us when we do this same uh, uh, presentation on the Tennessee side. Commissioner Azell could not be here today. He wanted to wait until they had their numbers to come in April. So we're going to be doing this, uh, I hope, uh, on the same level on the Tennessee side. Um, in the near future here in April, we're still confirming that date. So thanks to everyone for their participation in the data that I'm going to share with you today. Um, I know you all have seen this many times, but our mission uh, for Discover Bristol is advancing the economic vitality of Bristol as a year-round travel destination. And that's important because tourism is economic development. Um, one is not uh, uh, separate from the other. It's absolutely what the tourism industry's role is to do, is to support the economic development and initiatives of our community. So I put this up here because uh, Discover Bristol is the certified destination marketing organization for this community. And I don't think we talk enough about that and what it means to be the DMO. So we're here to promote and market the entire greater Bristol community. It's not just one piece of it. It's everything from downtown to 
uh, the pinnacle, to the falls, to the racetrack, to whatever it might be, wherever that is, that's an asset to be able to market. We're responsible for all of that in partnership, again, with the folks I mentioned earlier. We all do this hand in hand and need to be doing it hand in hand to, gr to get the greatest gain from that. Um, the part on the bottom about us being, as a chamber, uh, a five-star credit organization is important because with the CBB work being a part of what we do at the Bristol Chamber and us housing that, it's really important to know that the investment that you all make in that is in good hands. There are only 1.7% of over 7,000 chambers in the entire United States that have five-star accreditation. That's the highest level of accreditation you can receive as a, US, as a chamber in the United States. Um, we're the second oldest accredited in Tennessee, and our first in Tennessee, and the second in Virginia. Um, what that means to be five-star accredited, it means that you go through a rigorous accreditation application to prove that you are using best practices, that your financial accounting is the best that it can be according to their standards. It means that the programs that you are delivering, which includes Discover Bristol, is doing what is relevant, doing what is showing measurable outcomes. So I put that on there because we're very proud that our board um, continues to support that work um, as a part of the Chamber of Commerce because, as you all know, um, and. Rita didn't get a chance to, I don't think, mention this, but when we do our market leveraging grants with both Virginia and Tennessee, which is also unique to us, not many DMOs get to do that. Uh, we get to do that because we're on the state line. So we get to go to Virginia Tourism and say, we, we have this much money, we want to match it, and here's our strategy for how we're going to accomplish this work. Then we get to do the same thing with Tennessee. So we get to double leverage those dollars, which is incredible uh, to be able to do that. But in order to do that, you have to spend the money first. Those are reimbursable grants, so um, that's, unless you have an endowment as a DMO, unless you're a big <coughs> CVB um, Convention and Visitors Bureau, it's really hard to do that unless you have the money to do it. So the chamber made a decision many years ago that they were okay with being that backstop on the, on the front ends until the reimbursements come back in. Otherwise, you'd be operating in the negative until those grant reimbursements came about. So again, uh, reiterating some of our partnerships, um, you can see there are many, and it's hard to even name all of them. I do point out that we have two on there, uh, Eastman Credit Union, and uh, I don't have Sullivan Networks on this one, but USDA. This year, we wrote and received a grant from USDA for $62,500 to rebuild um, just the content, but also the, the network and the structure of our website for Discover Bristol, which is incredible. That's money that's hard to get uh, very often. So we had had a, a previous relationship with USDA doing the visioning process, and we had such a great working relationship that they offered um, if we would be interested in this. And we said, absolutely, and wrote the grant and took advantage of that. So that is currently uh, under rebuild right now, and it's also going to help us curate the content that we need for that website to be a rock star website. So we're really excited about having that roll out very soon. So what we know and what we believe, um, we do know, and if a lot of this, if you think about yourself as a traveler, when you go, when you start to plan a trip or you want to go visit somewhere, think about it through that lens in terms of what we, we look at it from. Think about when you take a trip somewhere, how you plan it, what you do when you're there, uh, the things you look for, and that's how we have to look at it through that lens. Uh, we do know that tourists become residents and business owners. Um, it is rare for somebody just to put their finger on a map and say, I'm going to travel to here and move my business and my family unless they have visited there at least one time before. So we know that tourism, uh, that visitation is incredibly important, again, from an economic development standpoint. Um, I will note that, that, and some of you all were with us, we took a trip to Greenville, South Carolina a few weeks back. and was really pleased with the learning opportunity we had when we were there. We looked at what they did, and our goal was not just to go there and say we want to be Greenville, South Carolina. It was to look at what they do, how they got there, what challenges they had, what failures they had, and how do we implement things from that trip that make us better and make us the community that we want to be and to grow into. 
Um, the takeaway for me, the one word that we heard over and over and over again was intentionality. Um, they, in, they intentionally, we heard this from the mayor and multiple partners, they wrap their economic development and their tourism strategies together. And they coupled that with really strong and long-term public-private partnerships to become who they are today. And they recognized that tourism was as much a part of their economic development strategy as anything. And they have been very intentional about that. To this day, they continue that intentionality through their strong business leadership to accomplish that. So we know that tourism builds a visitor economy. We know that tourism helps improve quality of life and quality of place. So when we talk about quality of life um, and we talk about tourism marketing efforts, a lot of people focus just on the visitor coming here. But we also know how important that building those assets and supporting those assets, how much that means to our residents who currently live here and pay taxes. I mean, when, when we're building out these wonderful things for people to come and visit and we're, we're showing what great assets that we have, that's as important to our own residents, those of us who are paying taxes and living here every single day. So it's as much a part of who we are as a community as it is the visitation that we're seeking to achieve. So, I've, and I'll, let me go forward and then I'll bring it back. So what I'm gonna show you is one, um, this is the Bristol, Virginia Economic Impact Sheet, and you all have this in hard copy as well. Uh, so just for the city of Bristol, Virginia, you can look at the 2018 number. This is 2019 data. So tourists are spend, their tourist spending, it helps lessen the state and local tax burden for each of us. So I'm a Bristol, Virginia resident. So I'm one of 8,757 households, and I pay $489 less in taxes because of the money that visitors who come here and spend. Um, the tourism and travel industry contributed $56.8 million to our overall economy in 2018, generated 506 jobs, it provided 10 million, 10.7 million in wages, and it generated 2.65 million in state tax revenue and 1.63 million in local tax revenues. And if you wonder where those numbers came from, you know, it'll, we can quote and say it was the um, um, U.S. travel and it came through Virginia tourism and the next numbers came from Tennessee tourism and U.S. travel. But the, at the end of the day, those dollars, can, th those amounts and uh, that data came from your commissioners of revenue. We didn't create the numbers and send them. Your commissioners of revenue, our commissioners of revenue, send those mo monies and those data sheets to the state where this gets calculated from. <clears throat> so on the Tennessee side, uh, the only access that we have is to county data. So um, when you look at this, consider that this is all of Sullivan County, and we don't have the ability at this point to be able to pull that out for Bristol specific, but it's also very telling. Um, if you look at those numbers, just as we did on the Virginia side, how impactful those dollars are. So the power of tourism. Um, if you look at visitor spending, um, these numbers are from 2018. Um, looking at Bristol, Virginia, Bristol, Tennessee, and Sullivan County collectively, the visitor spending, the, um, if I can read that, how much uh, the livelihood, the number of residents between, those are just Bristolians, so that does not include Sullivan County on the number of residents. So 43,745 Bristolians. Um, if you look at the personal income and salaries that are supported, you look at the local tax revenue, and then noting that those dollars come back directly into the general funds of both Bristol, Virginia and Bristol, Tennessee. So what does that mean when uh, it comes back into the general fund? And I'm going to touch on this a little bit later. But what that means, and, and we've heard um, in the past, you know, you have people who don't understand that th what that general fund supports for a community. And I think it's important to be very clear about that. And Rita touched on it as well. That general fund is supporting education, police, and fire, and uh, a multitude of different expenses that your localities uh, are responsible for. So those dollars that are generated in lodging taxes and sales tax, those come right into the general fund. They're supporting 
the core functions of a community. Um, so it's, it's a generator of income rather than uh, a line item expense. So if you look at the strategic plan, and, and I will tell you that this morning we spent um, three hours, and our partners were there with us this morning as well, and we had Kevin Triplett, who's former commissioner of tourism for Tennessee, who is a, a resident here and uh, whom we all know well, who's very entrenched in uh, the economy in our community and just a passion for Bristol overall. We spent a, a good amount of time working with him this morning and had an incredibly productive meeting uh, by all accounts and talking with our partners. And uh, we have a great plan moving forward. I will tell you that um, our goal at this point is creating an 18-month 18 mo 18 strategy. Um, and what that means from where you all are sitting is in order to create an 18-month 18 18 month strategy and beyond, we'd like it to be longer term, but for right now, 18 months, the one-year funding that we've talked and talked about, I know quite a bit, and you all have been incredibly um, gracious about coming to the table to talk about a three-year funding model, how important that is to really show true return on the dollars that you all are investing in this project. Um, you know, you can do one-year plans, you can survive on a year and, and then recreate what you're gonna do the second and third year, but anybody that works in business or is a business owner knows that without a long-term strategy, you're really not making the most efficient use of your funds with the greatest impact. And that's really important that we look at that um, and what Discover Bristol does to develop a product that we can market long term to get greater gains on that return. Um, so this is, this is similar to what we've done last year. Uh, you'll see some of the same things, but some of our overarching, our 30,000 foot level strategies are gonna be the same. It's how we implement those that will change, uh, hopefully over three years rather than every year. Um, again, our operations plan, um, marketing, promotion, and sales, um, all of the things listed there that are, again, your high level look at what we're here to accomplish and how we're gonna do that. So our target audience, um, a lot of these are similar to the ones that Rita mentioned that the entire Commonwealth of Virginia is focusing on. Um, we are gonna take um, a look again, we're gonna get all of our partners to look at their data from their websites and from the impressions that they have, their traveler profiles, and we're gonna bring those together as one, and we're gonna look at what we have from the Discover Bristol site and reassess those target markets. Are there some new areas we can look at, some maybe that are not performing as well this year, and reassess those to make sure that we get the greatest traction on the visitor profiles of those we know are gonna come here and spend money. So our key markets, and I know uh, we've got three here, but um, we were talking this morning, and, and there's one I think that we take for granted in terms of when we talk about an asset, that because we live here and enjoy it every day, which is our downtown. Uh, we know that uh, our sports and outdoor enthusiasts are a huge key market. Our music lovers, uh, that's a no-brainer. Our craft beverage fans, uh, for sure. Our, our motorsports, which are included in our uh, outdoor rec, segment there, but our downtown is one of our greatest assets as well. I mean, that's something that, it's, it's a place, but it's also a tremendous asset for what we have to market. So we have a strong team approach to how we deliver the product of Discover Bristol. Uh, you all know we're, we're hiring uh, two kind of newly structured positions that promise you is underway. Uh, it's been a little challenging to say the least, but we are getting there while also continuing to do the work that we're set forth to do. Um, so two distinct uh, CBB specific positions, but then you have the support um, of one, one full-time employee that's broken down across the sectors of the chamber. So you know, your front desk person who is doing your relocation packets and the front face to visitors who walk in the door. Um, we have, uh, accounting office, we have a finance person that does all the billing, does all the invoicing, uh, balances uh, our accounts. So that person is also working for CVB. And this backbone gives the greatest efficiency to each of our um, initiatives that they we're focused on there because I think they're both really important. I'm gonna talk about move to and retire Tennessee in a minute, but just know that that is a team effort and I, we feel like uh, we believe at the chamber that the team effort is the strongest approach because the most 
people, it goes across the entire community. The more people that know what our product is that we are here to deliver and that we work together with partners and just community members who may have an interest, that entire huge lift really does rise, uh, uh, rising tide does lift all boats. And we believe that from the chamber perspective as all, at all, as well, excuse me. We believe that as well because we believe that the more people who believe in that product and who are working to deliver that, the greater product and results we'll have at the end of the day. So that's, that's hard to read, I know, up there. But you have in front of you um, um, a review of, of a lot of the things that we were involved in over the past year. One of the things I want to note at the top of this first page, our Bristol 2040 visioning strategy, um, we had a 24 member steering committee of business leaders who invested money in a visioning process for how we move forward and identified through a lot of research and data the target sectors that we needed to be focusing on in terms of moving Bristol forward and what made sense and uh, what we had the capacity to do here. And a big part of that was tourism and entertainment and our music economy, um, which were two of the five target areas addressed, which uh, many of you all participated in focus groups that we had and in the data uh, that we, um, Market Street Services, you know, they, they did a lot of mining for that data and brought us to where we were to be able to create that implementation plan. And then again, I'm not going to read through these for the sake of time. You all can read these and see. If you have any questions about anything, uh, please ask. So next, some important data. Um, as you all know, we invested in the Smith Travel Reports um, data for hotel stays. And this has been great. This is a customized report just for Bristol, Virginia, and Bristol, Tennessee hotels that we purchase. Um, and it's a great indicator of the work that's being done to market. You, you look at people who stay in hotel rooms because they're the ones generating the lodging tax, among other things. Um, if you look at uh, the trend from 2015 to 2020, and we just have one month's um, data there, you can barely see the dot, but what's important is that it's above the 2019 numbers starting out trending this year. Uh, we all focused, we had a, a lot of conversations about focusing on those times of year that we have lower uh, visitation and spending in our hotel rooms and in our restaurants and, and other uh, shopping. And so we've really made a targeted effort at how do we increase those months um, of visitation. And this time, oh, 2019, we increased our occupancy rates 6.1% over the last year. So that's, that's a good place to be. Um, it's trending positive, and as you'll see in a minute, we still have some challenges in those areas, but we're not alone in that either. Uh, so if you look at our average daily rate, uh, which is basically what people are paying per day for a room, uh, we increased 2019, increased 1.7% 1 over 2018. Again, it's a positive trend. Um, and if you look at 2020 on this chart, you'll see that we are again trending up in the months of the year that we're trying to um, levelize the amount of uh, spending that happens year round, not just in the, the months that people typically travel. So if you look at the REVPAR, which is the revenue uh, per available room, that number increased 7.9% in 2019 over 2018. And again, you'll see that uh, trending in the direction that we want it to. So as I mentioned, seasonality is a challenge um, for us. It's something we are addressing, and, and we're seeing some positive trends on that. So we're, we're hoping to see more, but uh, it's not just for us. Most folks have that issue. Um, if you look at our own media, which is our, our website, our social media pages, our newsletter, um, our map distributions, the visitor guide distributions, you will see that uh, we have uh, good numbers there. We, we always have room to improve, but th that's where we stand at the end of 2019. I did provide um, a visitor's guide for each of you all, and that is currently in print, um, a redo for um, What's new in the area, the one that you have in front of you um, is our current one, but we have reproduced that and updated it with all the new. There's so much going on that we, we need to do it more often moving forward because we've had a lot of positive trend in terms of new openings. So that one will be out. Uh, we should have that in hand by the end of March. 
So our public relations, um, there's a couple of pages, one page, two pages of, uh, of our PR here. And I, I'm, again, I'm not going to go through these. You can look at those and ask questions um, as you, you see appropriate. But I will tell you that one of the takeaways, again, from our trip to Greenville in talking with their tourism staff, uh, the lady that came to work there the first year had a, um, they hired her and she came on board and um, she, they said, she said, how much money do I have to work with? And this was her marketing budget. And they said 50. And she said, 50 what? They said 50,000. And she said, I about swallowed my tongue and thought, what have I done? I made the biggest mistake of my life coming here because I've got $50,000 to work with. And she said, we don't even really have an asset here. At the time, they had not built out Greenville like you see it today. And over time, they have worked um, diligently. And they told us how they created that. Their strategy was through a PR campaign, a very strategic approach, which is part of what we're looking at for what makes sense for us here in Bristol. But they now have, overall, a $9 million tourism budget in Greenville, which is incredible. When you think about, they share with us, they do not have really an asset. We've caught, look at all the assets that we have. We're actually the envy of most. So um, our tourism product development, again, um, if you look at our, our strong assets, we've got the birthplace of country music, we've got Bristol Motor Speedway, we've got incredible outdoor rec opportunities that we haven't even begun to scratch the surface on. And of course, our incredible uh, downtown that continues to grow and thrive. We have the best downtown in all of the Tri-Cities and beyond, in my opinion. Um, you look at our visitor services part of our strategy, and uh, we partnered with Bristol Motor Speedway last year. Um, it's been about a year and a half in now. They target their first-time attendees. They found that if they engage on a personal level with first-time attendees, there are chances of keeping those folks longer term. They do a one, two, and three year strategy is tremendous in terms of loyalty to coming back and spending money here, especially at Bristol Motor Speedway, but NASCAR in general. So what we're gonna do is, uh, I've reached out to, to Birthplace of Country Music to see if we couldn't do a similar program with them there and, and help. You have a list of concierges who are basically volunteers and there's um, a strategic plan in place on how you engage with those first-time attendees. They basically get a VIP hand-holding that uh, first time that they come on board. And they, if they have a question, they call you. You can answer it. Where do I park? I have uh, my spouse is handicapped. We don't know what to do. And basically what we do is point them back to, as concierge, that whole list of 20-plus people, point them back to the uh, Speedway, in this case it would be the birthplace of country music, so that they can get very specific information if it's something that our concierge cannot provide. And it's a, it's a proven program that we're looking forward to seeing it grow more and continuing our partnership with Bristol Motor Speedway now. Um, you can see our, um, our visitors that have been assisted. Again, our visitor's guide is under production again. We created uh, an updated downtown walking tour brochure that is also in printing as we speak. Um, and we, in partnership with Believe in Bristol, created and produced a new downtown and greater Bristol pad map that it's just a tear off that when people walk into any of our businesses, they can pick that up and go. Um, retire Tennessee and move to, I'm gonna kind of go quickly so I don't, um, what's our time look like? Oh, all right. Um, these programs, we don't ever talk about these a lot, but they're a part of our tourism effort. Our Move To program is a partnership with Eastman Credit Union. Uh, Retire Tennessee is a program that is specifically um, a Tennessee tourism uh, program that is a partnership with Network. So that's a great, um, we get leads from the shows that we go to with Retire Tennessee. I will show you, we, we have lots of collateral. That's a front and back of a collateral that we produce. We do, we do them for golf, all different kinds of sectors, and we go to the Ideal Living Expos as part of the uh, Sullivan County team, and we basically get people to move here. We tell them all the good things there are about Bristol to come and move here. Um, so our finance. Um, if you look at um, our budget is, uh, if, you, if you take in the USDA grant and the, the Eastman Credit Union sponsorship, we're at $515,000 this year for Discover Bristol. That's based on an assumption that uh, we have requested $175,000 from each 
um, city council. So that's based on that. And, and the uh, revenue sources that are in the pie chart there are also based on that assumption. And it includes our USDA grant, as I mentioned, um, of 62500 On our next page, you can see our breakdown um, of where those expenditures go. You can see that, uh, I can see that, the percentage of Bristol, Virginia and Bristol, Tennessee, um, excuse me, of our um, promotions and grants, um, of everything that we do expenditure-wise or salaries and wages and what percentage of that $550,000 budget those account for. Um, the other thing I note to the right is um, the Bristol Chamber, which includes all of the financials for Discover Bristol. We have an annual audit and every year it's by an independent auditor. We change that up every few years for a different perspective. We receive raving uh, reviews from those. We have we have not had a single deficit ever mentioned, and actually we get a lot of accolades for the way that we do handle things, and that, uh, uh, that goes back to our five-star accreditation as well. And I would also, I didn't mention, we have with us several of our board members um, today and executive committee members. Are you all here? We, we greatly appreciate um, their leadership and, and those of you all who sit here today, as many of you have served in the past and serve now on either our chamber or our Discover Bristol boards and we greatly appreciate um, that leadership because that's a big part of why we continue in that positive direction. So this chart, um, I thought a little bit about before I put it in here, but I, I put it in here, it is not to instigate any kind of controversy. The point of this chart is for us to have a historical view of where we have been over the last 20 years in terms of lodging tax collections, allocations to Discover Bristol. And I think the important thing to come out of this is that, you know, if you look at that over at least the last 15 years, we've kind of stayed constant for the most part. We've had some blips here and there, but we've been relatively constant even though lodging taxes for the most part have grown. And I think when you, or static, you're actually, in my opinion, when you're not moving forward, you're not moving. And I think it's important that we continue to assess our collections and where we are and the investment that's made back into tourism and how critically important that is. Um, I will note the lodging taxes, you'll see a couple of um, collection drops on the Tennessee side. Just to note, on the last couple of years, those were camping tax. The, the main part of that reduction was from the camp, camping tax that gets added on, and we, we know that that's been a challenge for uh, race fans for the most part. That's where most of our camping is located. And I think this is really, this is for further discussion. I just think it's something to think about and to look at uh, for sure. So um, one of the questions we've been asked is, what would you do if we gave you more money? And I know uh, Councilwoman Powers has asked that, and, and I think the high level answer to that is, that depends. Are we looking at one year? Are we looking at multiple year funding? Because I think that changes the answer to what would we do with more money? And again, trying to be very strategic. Um, I've given some thoughts and ideas on what we could do with additional monies. Um, we would be much more targeted, I think, in, uh, if we had more dollars to spend on where that would go. Uh, we'd have more flexibility in how we spend that. And especially if we're building a three year strategy. If you look at McDonald's, what do they say about their cheeseburgers? They 2.65, 3.65 million sold every year. How many years have they been making cheeseburgers? More than I can remember. Do, have they stopped marketing? No, we all know that they've made $3.65 million uh, in, in their cheeseburger sales, So, or how many they've made. And if you think about it that way, it doesn't matter that we all know they're cheeseburgers and that they're good. What matters is that they know that there's somebody else making a cheeseburger out there. Back to Rita's point about competitive uh, draws for our visitors. You know, Burger King makes cheeseburgers. You know, you go on Wendy's makes them. You, you, you name it. They know that they have gained brand identity and huge traction with all they've done and they're not going to stop doing it. They're actually putting more and more into it to continue that push. Um, why is investment now as important uh, as it ever was. It's always important, but I think if you look at now, you know, we have incentivized hotels and properties with public dollars for them to open and to be a huge asset to our community. 
private and private hotel owner, owners have invested their dollars, uh, just as one example. So it's really important that we continue to support the sustainability of those, which is how, the only way you do that is if you get visitors to keep coming here and staying in the rooms. So I think it's uh, prudent that we do follow that um, sustainability model because those are public dollars we're investing. If you look at the casino and resort coming online uh, here in the near future, any, any time you have something like that come into your community, you need to be prepared and wet, ready, not just when it arrives, but on the front end of, of how we get there and how we embrace that new addition to our community. Um, Ken Burns, Tennessee Tourism invested seven figures in that documentary. That will live in perpetuity. If you look at the Civil War documentaries that Ken Burns did, they are still around and thriving today. So. When we do those kind of, uh, make those kind of investments, it's important that we also continue to backfill that with our local dollars. And then of course we've seen the Bristol Motor Speedway race move into the playoffs for the first time this year and it's a, another good reason for us to uh, continue to support. Um, I put this up here because I think it's important when, um, when a community member that may not understand the legislation that was created to allow a locality to implement a lodging tax and the purpose of that. So the legislators gave the locality the ability to implement a lodging tax. That lodging tax is paid by visitors who come and stay in a hotel room here. You and I are not paying it here in Bristol. We're paying it when we go somewhere else, but we're staying in our homes here. So it is not a tax that is ever placed on our residents unless we decide to go stay in a hotel downtown, which we're all hoping we might do at some point anyway. Um, so those dollars come from outside, that's huge. And the intent of the legislation in both Virginia and Tennessee was when you implement that tax, that that tax uh, that goes right into the general fund again, supporting fire and police and other, that a portion of that go back into tourism marketing so that you're continuing to grow that pot of money. So that's the intent. And really, um, at present, this is what we're doing with it. Um, to a degree. It's not to diminish what you all do to support, and I, please know that we're very grateful for the support that you all do provide because it is important. Tourism is an important piece of our economy here. I can't say that enough. So this is more just for the general public, I think, to understand that those dollars that are raised here do support core services in this community, hands down. So again, what we know and what we believe and what we do but most importantly, what our vision is. Our vision is to be one of the most visited and talked about travel destinations in the Southeast. And with that, I will end and say thank you so much for the opportunity to present and um, we'll take any questions that anyone has and I know Rita would, would be happy as well. All right, well, thank, <clears throat> thank you very much. I know um, we've got some people who have to go at one and we're, we're right on the dot, so if you wanna. We won't hold it against you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, does anyone have any questions they would like to ask right now, or do we want to hold off and do them in, do them in email format, or do we want to take questions right now? And please, while Rita's here, take full advantage of her expertise. She's a wealth of knowledge. I, I just wanted to clear, ask a couple of questions. Actually, uh, what is Crush Friday? Crush Friday was a <laughs> special program that Chris's team in partnership marketing develop to extend the week end for individuals. So really it was a statewide focus to say, add another day, crush your Friday. Don't wait until the weekend, just go out on Saturday and Sunday. Start on Friday. So, so we got $10,000 in Bristol yes, for that? Grant, what, yes. what did we do with that money? That was used in, in mainly digital marketing, social media marketing, and what you do is you push out on every channel to all your demographics. Um, all of the graphics, we created graphics, we used graphics that were provided by Virginia Tourism, um, newsletters to our subscribers so that they know that this is an opportunity. And it's a way to highlight Bristol in a different uh, manner. And it was very, very successful. It was a bit like uh, bringing people in from out of town, but also for those in town, it's like an ambassador program. Mm -hmm. Go crush your Friday. Mm -hmm. Well, I know Roanoke, for example, has a really good uh, program. I think it's on Fridays, if I'm not mistaken. It's mostly beach bands. It's really awesome. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm curious to know, you know, the city of Bristol, Tennessee puts several thousand dollars uh, per week 
into um, the actual cost of the bands. And somebody else may know the exact figure, but I think we spend, is it 50000 a year or some, a lot of money on bands on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. You know, part of this money could be used for the actual band itself. Um, then we got something really to, you know, to uh, promote. Um, although we do have a lot of um, Music and private music. entities that, you know, restaurants and others that, you know, provide uh, bands as well. Um, the other question I was going to, I just want to make sure I understood this. The, the average growth rate of tourism in the state of Virginia is 4.4%. 4 4.4%. 4 yes. Okay. All right. The, uh, another, actually, this is probably a question for you, Beth. And we, actually, you mentioned about the $10,000 Crush Friday that that went into digital media. What other type of marketing was that for uh, promoting Bristol? So, digital media. Yes, so what we would do is we would take um, the campaign uh, material and we would say, let's crush Friday in Bristol, and we would tell them all the different things you could do on a crush Friday on that weekend, all the things you can do across all the mediums that we had to share it across, and why would you use that time to come here and spend money in Bristol? So we used every opportunity that we had across our different sectors to be able to market to folks to come here. And user-friendly to give them a suggested itinerary. Yeah. So yes. left mm -hmm. all the guesswork out of it. Just Is there, uh, was there any traditional uh, advertising put into that TV, radio, you know, this is a great, you know, traditional advertising, anything like that? Uh, you're talking about ten thousand dollars to be able well, to. Uh, actually, I was looking at our overall budget of, I think about thirty-five, forty percent went into marketing, and advertising, and, and looks like the brunt of that is digital media type advertising with our with our website, you know, Facebook and all those type of things. If you had to guess, and I know this is definitely traditional marketing, but as far as traditional marketing in the sense of billboards, uh, television, radio other things like that, do you have like a ballpark percentage of what maybe of that is going to traditional marketing? And the reason I ask this is that we have found, you know, in the city of Bristol, Tennessee, when we're trying to push information out to folks, a lot of people are getting the information through those digital means, but we are missing a huge segment of folks that are not working in those areas. So I guess I'm just trying to fill that out. So I can, part of that is, is these visitor guides, for example, are all over. They're not just here for someone to come and pick up. They're in welcome centers and um, very strategically placed uh, locations in our market. Um, you know, you can print things and you can put them in those locations, but we know when you're trying to reach them, you, when they're six hours away, um, making copies of things or it, it's one thing to do that. So we look at the market, we look at the demographic you're trying to reach, like we will target a specific traveler profile, who do we want here? And then we reach, we use the, the appropriate medium for that specific uh, campaign, I'll use that one, where those folks are, how can they get here? You have to look at if they're gonna come here for a weekend, how far would they be to travel here? What would they wanna do? And so a lot of it, really a lot of it is the digital and the social marketing is sometimes some of the best way to do that. It just depends on the specific campaign and what you're trying to accomplish. I mean, there's a lot of data that goes into those decisions. So a lot of stuff we wouldn't see because it's being done in Asheville and- You shouldn't see it Richmond. unless you're traveling right. in those, those target I guess, markets. I guess a good, maybe a, for our next meeting, a good thing to do is say of, of our, if our overall budget is $500,000 and we're using 40% of that towards marketing, advertising, website, all that type of stuff. What percentage of that is traditional? I would like to know what part percentage of that is digital, or excuse me, uh, traditional type um, advertising and marketing. I, I'll say advertising. It might be cleaner and more helpful in our next meeting in, in putting all this together. You know, we work best on a budget and seeing, you know, to, to uh, look in those budgets, the past year's budget, the projected coming year's budget, and to compare and contrast where those dollars have gone, um, I think would be helpful and would answer your questions, Chad. Mm -hmm. It's just for us to have a copy of that budget. We've seen a lot of figures and just, you know, the, the, the economic impact that Discover Bristol has, you know, website clicks and all those type things. Um, it's still difficult to put a dollar amount to that to understand our, 
of return on investment that the city makes into it and from other partners from the state, both states and other private partners as well. I, I was, I was going to ask about software. Are we using for the hotel occupancy, uh, average daily rates and the revenue uh, per average revenue per room? Mm -hmm. Are we using a software for that or are we using uh, like an outside source to get those numbers or how, how are we calculating that? So we use the industry standard, which is Smith Travel uh, Report, and they do this for people all over the country. And we have a custom, so they're an outside uh, source. And people sell, hotels report their data into that, and they collate that all across the country in different manners. We customize and pay for the report that we want from them. They tell us how many hotel rooms have reported, um, how many properties have reported. You'll get a report if some uh, hotel is closed. So we get a lot of data from that. Um, and these numbers that are, are the most relevant probably in terms of um, seeing what changes we're seeing um, on the dollar side of it, which is the lodging tax. So, so an outside source. Correct. Is, is and, and that's one of the things that I, that I would like to also know at our next meeting is return on investment. Taking the, all of the information that we have, tell us what our return on investment is off the money we spend. There are softwares. I've talked to several folks about this. There are software packages we can buy ourselves that may calculate that, and they're pricing. They're several, tens of thousands of dollars in some cases. Uh, how much? $30,000. Well, I think we need to think about that either in a software package or an outside agency that could help us to take all of that great information that we get and turn it into dollars. I think it'd just be so much easier. We've talked about this multiple, multiple times. I hope we can kind of look into that a little bit further. My last question is our five-star accreditation with the chamber, which is excellent. I mean, it just can't get any better. Thank you. Does the CBB, does Discover Bristol help us achieve that five-star rating, or is that, com is that completely separate? It's all part of it. So when we, you do an application that it's about, five, if you're in old school, about five binders this thick full of mm -hmm. program and finance and facility and personnel and professional, everything that, that a business would look at in terms of its um, strength and its sustainability. Look at sustainability, they look at your, your financial position. So it's all part of that. So to ha if you don't have a CVB, uh, you can apply without that. Or if you don't, if you do economic development as part of that's part, you have to include everything that you um, work toward and for as part of that application. You can't pick and choose. So yes, the CVB, long story short, is part of that. Um, and a good piece of that. So we do the same thing for this, the work of Discover Bristol in answering those questions as we do for everything else we do in that application process. And uh, if I could respond back to the Smith Travel Report. So we did that in response to a request we got from you all is that you've got to show us the numbers and um, did a lot of research into the most efficient and most effective use of funds to get the information that you all really need and want that makes the difference. You know, you can do software, but then you got to remember somebody has to run that software. Somebody has to get data. <clears throat> the Smith Travel Report, and may, Rita, maybe you can speak to this, is the most um, recognized and reputable. Is that fair to say? It's a go-to resource for not only hotels but um, tourism entities across the country because they measure it in a way that's consistent. Mm -hmm. To Chad's point, I know where he's coming from. Five to six years ago, uh, in meeting with the city. So for us, it's through Virginia Tourism, I do believe, in terms of the, who, who manages that. It's, we've had it forever, so I say forever for a long time. Um, yeah, it's managed through our just overall tourism. So 
once you establish that you have governmental support of your tourism office and that you are financially backed, you are staff-wise backed, you make a request through Virginia Tourism to become a certified visitor center or certified destination marketing organization. So, and would that be true that you're certified through the state of Tennessee and through the state of Virginia? Virginia. Yeah. Yes. And we also certify visitor centers in, in a way that, again, makes access to our information and the practices and principles of an organization consistent across the Commonwealth. If I could real, very quickly just respond to that. So um, in Virginia, those market leveraging programs, uh, th those dollars that are available, if any of our partners um, apply for those, the DMO is required to sign off and endorse that before they can get a market leveraging uh, return to apply for that. So in Virginia, that's the case. In Tennessee, those grants are only available to DMOs. I have a quick question. Yes, the, the MLPs, yes. Sorry. Um, quick question. It's a tough one, so sorry I didn't give you any heads up. I'll try. <laughs> um, and this is really for everyone here in this room. Uh, let me start by saying I, I think we have um, an incredible opportunity, um, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, because you mentioned it a little bit in your presentation. There's uh, something that could be coming to Bristol, Virginia, that could bring over a million visitors a year to Bristol. Um, so I think we really have one chance to roll it out the right way, effectively, the first time. How can we, you know, tie it all together, speaking of, for both sides of the state line, how can we make sure these people, who many of whom have never come to Bristol before, visit both, you know, the Falls and the Pinnacle, visit both Sugar Hollow and Steel Creek, and most importantly, visit downtown while they're here. How can we do that, and what do you need from us to help with that? So I'm assuming you're referencing the resort and casino. Yes. And I think Jason had to leave. He had a short uh, window today. Um, I would say, first and foremost, that's a partnership with them because um, they're going to be the key driver in some ways to the folks that are coming there. It's going to take all of us to support that. But the Hard Rock name in itself is going to draw people. But what's, what it's going to take on our end before it even gets close to that point is working together with you all as localities to determine how is our community prepared for this? Um, what do our frontline folks from um, our hospitality staff in our hotels to our servers to our restaurant uh, business owners downtown and in the Pinnacle and the Falls. What do they need to know? Uh, we need to arm this entire community with the right information. And we talked about that this morning a lot is about how we need this community to all be ambassadors to every visitor and, and especially when we have the resort and casino, but to any visitor that comes here. And we've done some of that, but we have uh, an, oppor an opportunity to do a lot more of that collectively, and we're going to talk a little bit about that after we put more meat behind it. So I would say having a very strong partnership um, with you all and um, partnership with the owners of the resort and casino, and I think us all doing this hand in hand. It's going to take everybody uh, doing this lift. And I know that the, the owners have said that they're very committed to the other assets and partner community um, uh, businesses, whether it's downtown, whether it's taking people fly fishing to the South Holston Lake, whether it's going shopping. So it's going to, and that's a role a DMO plays very clearly, is to, to make sure that we're all doing this together to the best of our ability uh, so that we all succeed as a result of that uh, new infusion. And I think uh, just to follow up on that, what you want is a robust and tourism office that is highly functioning. And you need people who are dedicated, and that is their job. That is to market the destination for recruiting new visitors. And when you have a new product like that, you want to make sure you're in alignment with the developers, with those who have created the new product, and that you're in markets at the same time. And the messaging is very similar and it all looks alike and it sounds alike. And you need a strategy to be able to follow through on that as well as a plan. 
Beth, with regards to hotel stays, <clears throat> is there a tool or can a tool be obtained that would distinguish if it's just a person coming in, staying overnight just because they were passing through, got tired and sleepy, versus someone coming in here, say they're a contractor and working, and the true tourist that's coming here to spend vacation. Is there a way to de determine that? I see Shane shaking his head yes. <laughs> So you can provide that information broken down those three ways? I, I, I would like to see that person. I mean, well, we, we would have to have hoteliers willing to take the time to do that on their end and um, provide that to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, I'd like to see it across the board for all hotels in the city. <laughs> and the statistics show that business travel is down. There are a lot more people remote working and um, that. So that, and that's what I've seen anyway, that that, that uh, sector of travel is not uh, on the up. It's more leisure travel than business travel um, for the most part. So, and it, back, you know, thinking about the Smith Travel Report, um, one of the beauties of that is that these hotels know that Smith Travel is the go-to. They know that the data that they're entering there that is proprietary is protected and that it's aggregated and there's no, you know, I can't call them and say, I really want to know what so-and-so did. They're not going to give us that information. We get it aggregated. Um, you know, I'm sure there's software we, we can look into that, but I mean, that's one of the, the joys of, of using a third party source that, again, that's validated and reputable, and that those who are, are willing to share that data do so because they do trust that source um, in that manner. And then the other question I have uh, a little bit ago, you mentioned that we currently don't have a way of extrapolating the tourism dollars in Bristol, Tennessee versus Sullivan County. I mean, what 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 is we need to be able to do that with? So um, that's the it's typical of almost a lot of data that um, you get from Tennessee because Virginia is different because cities are independent of counties so they automatically report and collect that way. Tennessee is not so much the case. Um, Kevin Triplett mentioned this morning that they had looked at trying to do that when he was commissioner and were not successful in, in making that happen. Uh, we can ask, uh, that'd be a great question, question for Commissioner Izell when he comes in April to to want to know if that's uh, something that could be done. If we can extract, if we can ex extract or extrapolate uh, the occupancy tax, we should be able to have that as well. And, and just to throw a little something into perspective, I think it's so exciting right now what, what we all have in front of us, but I, I, I hope we haven't forgotten that we have uh, major tourism generators that are here that bring in hundreds of thousands of people multiple times a year, and that's the track. And so uh, while its attendance has been off here lately, it is still working diligently to provide to all of our community, and so, which is why we have felt that it was so important to stay in the game of tourism because we, and not to just say, well, we have a new event, so now we're going to get in the game, but to stay in the game because we have the birthplace of country music, we have the museum, we have music festivals, we have lots of things that we should all be behind throughout the year and our money should be there as well. So I, I'm excited about everything that's to come and the things that we do have here and the things that are yet to come. Well, thank you for that, and we agree wholeheartedly. Um, we had Bristol Motor Speedway at the table this morning when we were talking about our strategy and couldn't agree more. It's why we do the concierge program with them because we see, 
we see for them that's a huge return on their long-term visitation and loyalty and we we feel like that's an important partnership to continue and our lodging tax collections we get directly from uh, Tara and from Tamara so they we just specifically request those from them um, but those come from the state pardon those do come from the state so to Malin's point is that while it may not be, you may not be able to pull it out by brand or this, that, or the other, that data can be, be extrapolated. Love your word. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not concerned about which hotel it is. It's just trying to break out those dollars so we'd have a better understanding of how much is truly tourism, how much is just somebody driving through, or maybe some contractor staying. Just, just trying to break that out. And, I, and my response to that does is, on some level, we don't care because they're they're here and they're visiting. Even if it's if it's the first time they've maybe they stopped on the interstate because they were tired, it was late. They may be more likely next time if they have a good experience to come back again. Or maybe it's someone who's been here or planned a trip here to stay. We want people to stay multiple nights. The goal is not just the one nighters, although their dollars are the same as anyone else's. But True. when they stay multiple nights. It means they're going also not just staying in the hotel and getting back in their car and driving on to their other destination. It means they're coming downtown into the Pinnacle and they're, they're going to the museum and they're coming to a baseball game. I mean, it's all the things that we want them. It's those extra spends that they're making that you really get when you have the multiple night visit. And I think it just allows us the opportunity to be able to <coughs> research and to maybe aggressively market certain ways as well. Absolutely, and, and we look, that's the research that we have, thank goodness, to uh, Virginia Tourism and Tennessee Tourism, they have big budgets. Um, from my perspective, they have big budgets. They're up to their eyeballs in research and data. That's what they're there to do. They're a resource to us to make sure that when we need something, we go to them. And, and they are both incredibly responsive when we need information when we go to them. I mean, that's how we do what we do in a very targeted manner. Mm -hmm. Uh, two comments. <clears throat> First off to you, Beth, uh, the information you had towards the end about the legislative intent and kind of that percentage breakdown, thank, thank you for including that. I mean, at some point, uh, I, th I think that's a discussion we need to have both probably individually and then we've had some joint discussions together, but, you know, the, the intent of that is w we're receiving lodging taxes with a certain amount of that. Uh, it's not prescribed in the legislation, but clearly it needs to be reinvested. I think that's just good business sense to reinvest in your product. And so what is that ratio? Because I think if we could find that, it would help you be able to develop two and through your term, say, to, so you knew what you would have, as well as incentivizing you to, to uh, if, if more people are coming and staying, then that gives you more money to work with. So. Uh, you know what that amount is I I don't really know I mean it's going to take some looking at some figuring we but can I think make some if, suggestions <laughs> well uh, and I'm sure when we get to that point you will uh, but I guess the point is if we can kind of come up with even even if we can't get there now saying this is where we want to be and over the next three years or something we're going to work to get there so that I also think it'd be good to have that in place before certain opportunities that may arise come because then that way you know once that gets here it will help uh, really push that beyond. Uh, Absolutely and, and if I could on that slide, um, I really that was not meant to be an instigation of anything because the message I hope that I can deliver today is I know we've had some funding differentials, I know that there have been challenges that are different on both sides of the state line. We just ask that, that don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I mean, tourism is important. This isn't just about Discover Bristol. This is about, it's about Bristol. This is what you all are here to represent. It is about the investment to get people to come here so that those cash registers keep ringing. Um, and so please don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. And to your point, you know, if we started those conversations, the three-year MOU, if we can collectively, um, um, talk very frankly about, all right, if it's this year, what's next year and then the next year, to your point, I think those, um, those gestures of goodwill and, and setting forth um, a commitment on some level, at least verbally, I know that, um, I know we can get there and I think that's really important to look at. Yeah. 
And, and then my other point in, in talking in, in terms of investment, uh, thank you, uh, Rita and Virginia Tourism. That, I didn't realize the amount of grants that came back. That, that shows how the money that's given is already, you're, you're getting a return right there because it's being leveraged both by Virginia and Tennessee Tourism. And, yes. and I appreciate uh, uh, that, that investment back into the communities. I also want to say I appreciate uh, you and, and, and Chris and Steve and the VTC staff coming down here today, but not just today, y'all are good partners. You're, you, you're here a lot, you understand Southwest Virginia, probably in my dealings with state government, y'all are in Southwest Virginia as much or more than anybody else. You, you understand this region, it's a, what makes it unique, its attractions, its culture, and you're good about carrying that on then to, to help drive traffic here, people here, whether it be tourist or as you pointed out even with Amazon to help with business because the the two are really in some ways linked together they're not independent thank so. you Bill we love Bristol <laughs> <laughs> and one last thing if I could you know we talk about um, accountability of those dollars and so forth when we apply for these market leveraging grants from both states we are held accountable to very specific uh, measures and if we spend the money up front, hoping that we're going to get that money on the return side by doing what we said we were going to do in the grant application. If we don't do that and we don't show the outcomes, you don't get that reimbursement back. So we are held to a very high standard of accountability from both state tourism offices on that respect. Yeah, our grants are performance-based. All right. Well, Beth, Beth and your team, thank you very much. And Rita, thank you all for coming down. I think this is a good, good conversation, and I appreciate you all both showing the value that you all bring to the table, which is which is important for us to remember. You know, for you with us, and for you with both of us, it's important for us to remember the value that you bring to the table and and the work that you all do. So we do appreciate it. And uh, I know everybody's got to get back from lunch break, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, if there's nothing else, I'm going to go ahead and uh, declare us adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.